My name is Karayani, and the meaning is moonlight on the water. I am from the Taino Nation, and my clan is Turtle Clan. And um, it's really a beautiful feeling to be here with um, all these different people from all different parts of the world with one mind and one heart, which is for peace and love, and understanding, respecting one another. With um, Columbus Day coming up, um, I, I feel that it is especially important to remember the first people, the original people, the Taino people that uh, welcomed Columbus and his crew with uh, open arms. The word Taino means a gentle people. And, um, and that's our way, not only Taino people, but all indigenous people. And so um, it's really fitting that we're here today celebrating the anniversary of the Peace Pagoda with Jun Sung, who we love and respect very much. And we honor her and all of the, the people that work with her. And your question about the future, I see a very bright future, you know, despite everything that's going on in the world and our, our indigenous people suffering all across the globe. I see a bright future because our young people are beginning to lift their heads and put their shoulders back and really be proud of who they are. We recently had a group of uh, indigenous youth that came through our, our area where we live with a declaration of youth which they wrote themselves and they ran all the way from Canada to New York City and they presented it to the United Nations. And they were so proud, so strong. They ran for days until they reached their destination and they spoke. They had the, the opportunity to speak their hearts and their minds. So our youth is becoming aware. Our youth is taking a stand. They're picking up where our elders are leaving off. So. We're very, very hopeful and very happy. to say, unlike the, the teens that you were just describing, some of your own, these guys are really interested in political, political activism, mm -hmm. having a spiritual understanding. They even love our old music. Mm -hmm. um, it's very exciting to me. Um, <laughs> so to cultivate when possible, mm -hmm. any of that interest, and hopefully they can reach to their peers in yeah, a way that we can. there's a lot of stuff on line now, too, though, but you got to go to the right sites. And you should go straight to the United Nations and look at what's going on with indigenous people. You're going to discover shells down there, suck out of the minerals, resources, and oil out of there, and they leave a leach field there. Mm -hmm. And then they're gone. And then people come back and they got to live in that society and there's contamination and stuff going on like that. Mm -hmm. and there's websites up there now that are telling people all over the world that, hey, okay, wait a minute, too many Americans are figuring out what we're doing. 
and you know, we're a large corporation, you know, we're getting citizens of our own people, people we might be related to, being concerned about what's going on down there. You know, they're going to say, well, maybe we better be careful next time we go somewhere else. You see, they have to be monitored and they have to be censored. And I'm thinking that's what you're hoping is going to help them everywhere. And I would be a big activist. You know? I know a little bit about the American Indian movement as an activist. Because back in the day, I used to be involved with the American Indian movement. I was one of the young warriors that was out in front lines fighting for native sovereignty, native rights, and everything from taxation to, to uh, burial grounds, Mohawk burial grounds, being and stuff like that. And, uh, so I have a sense of understanding what our sovereignty is about. In the politics, you had to know what you want to campaign yourself, you want to get yourself recognized, the good things you can do and the bad things you can do. So anybody can you know, put a bandolier on, Put up an AK-47 and go to the front line, but at the same time, you know, defeat your purpose if they find a reason to arrest you. Mm -hmm. you see? So you really got to be smarter than them at their own game. Fight fire with fire. And one of the guys that I like to uh, to use as an example is uh, Chief Joseph, who was an educated man. You see? He understood uh, American style. So he fought fire with fire, he protected his people for a long time because he understood their politics, good and bad. So if you go down to South America, it's really bad down there. If you look online and you go straight to the United Nations, they have tons of information down there that will tell you what's going on down there. There's books that have been written, there's DVD videos, all kinds of stuff you can look into. And every single one's going to say, you know, write to your governors, write to your politicians, write to Shell, write to these different gas corporations that are down and ask them why they're down. Right. And they the youth, we need the youth to be involved too. Exactly. You know, it's interesting you talk about the kids, you know, I grew up in the Jewish tradition and what you were talking about, you know, my tradition, I learned that I was part of something that was thousands of years that transcends petty nations, corporations, and things that go up and down. It was very interesting to grow up as part of that. It's like all that stuff is fluff. I, that's what I learned. It was interesting. It was interesting for me to grow up that way. And I never it never occurred to me to ally myself to a nation or a corporation, brand name. And, and part of that I you know, I learned we in seventh grade we learned about Native American stuff. You know, about the land and all. I think most of us ignored it. I don't but you go to a common school now, okay? I'm talking about the smartest people in the world. They understand what's going on. I'm under the assumption that they don't keep history from them. They don't keep the truth from them. Because it teaches them actually how they manipulated all these different indigenous communities and nations all over the world. And how they have to keep doing it to survive. But the common people who are common schools, on the other hand, they don't have yeah. access to that information. Yeah, yeah. See, so even in our own societies, yeah. 30 or 40 years ago, we didn't have the access to the information that we have today. Well, the United States is a funny place. It doesn't have this permission. Because I've learned that not as well. Well, we just got an education by going to the black communities. We went over there and we've seen that. <laughs> We could have stayed there for three months. <laughs> but it was actually three weeks. It seemed like three weeks to me because we went to three different islands. Invited for their culture, for their time, and tradition. Just taken away from them. That's one of the things that they emphasize is that these are the things that was taken away from our people. We must remember our culture, our land, and our people. A beautiful song. And when you listen to it, it just could have broke your heart to listen to it. Because it told us that. What we learn is that they're going through the same thing, the same culture shock that we're going through here in North America. No different at all.